Hello and welcome back to Boring Dad Gaming, where today I'm going to be playing some more of The Pale Beyond. We are in our little sort of winter hideaway now. I wonder why this one is open. But anywho, we are week 21. Which feels pretty good. We've got to get to week 35, remember, which is when we're hoping to be rescued. I mean, I don't know if that will happen. Um, but to think that we're potentially uh, more than halfway through, that feels not too bad, actually. That feels not too bad. Uh, so, we should probably... I mean, I, I, I think... I must have been... I think I was... Maybe I was zoomed in last time and it was like this and I didn't notice a little penguin store, but I panicked a bit when I didn't see that was there. Um, I might just go in there now and... I can take one. I think I can set crew to get it either, as well. But we're not going to do that now. We're going to go um, into the big tent. What's made of? Um, we have five. I think they're all freezing. Some might be frostbitten. Freezing. Poor little rump. Oh, he's got frostbite, so he definitely needs to be healed. So when he gets freezing, I can't actually heal him. He won't, because he's a doctor. He won't get in. He won't get in the medical bed um, unless he's frostbitten, and then he will. So we should be able to do something with him. Let's go and talk to. Uh, Hammond and Cordell. Where's the beasties? Earning their rest, something they may make a habit of in the coming weeks. Ah, and you're finally afforded a break from them. I'm only seeking a modicum of heat. Ah, you must get used to that too. Long winter ahead. Indeed. Long, long winter. Let's talk to Nutley. Junior. Oh, it's just like one big tent, don't you think? Yes, I suppose so. Can't hunt in this weather. Wouldn't find anything anyway. Well, here's open we've stockpiled enough for winter. Yes, let's. Hmm, me too. Mr. Gloss and Kasha. Oh, under the canopy, it's almost cosy. <laughs> if you ignore that it's colder than ever, yes. Minus 46. Oh, what I wouldn't give to have a nice flask of hot cocoa at a time like this. Ah, why did you have to mention it? Oh, now it's all I want. Ah, well, best save for home, eh? Ever the optimist. See how our little doggies are getting on? They're in a little tent again. Aww. That's all cute belly rubs for the dogs. <laughs> uh, in the medical tent. I think we'll do requests first, perhaps. That's over here. Let's talk. see uh, gnomes and grips, what they're talking about. We'll be, um, he was brummy, wasn't he? We'll be held up here for quite a while. Oh, Gnomes is... Okay, I know Gnomes, yeah. Oh, at least there's less work on our plates. Well, you should be careful with lamplight. It wouldn't be hard to set the canopy alight. Then we certainly want, wouldn't want to be trapped underneath. Yeah, gloomy one, aren't you? Sorry, just cautious. Alright, request tent. Hammond and Junior again. Well, Captain, sun won't be getting up for a while. Welcome to our new home. Nay, this canopy ain't pretty, but she'll do us all right. Better than being stuck out in that blizzard. That, I believe, we can all agree on. Oh, he's a strong one, oi. Worse than any I've seen. We'll have to keep an eye out for rips in the outer canopy. Don't want the heat seeping out. Or the cool ripping in. You see a single hole, you grab whatever you can to fix it. Best we heed their warnings, Captain. This tarpaulin is old and has clearly seen better days. Great. Captain, I hope you are becoming accustomed to our new setup. It will be some time before we can leave this canopy. Twenty-one weeks. I assume you've been keeping track of time? It's been twenty-one since we first set sail. Okay, so it's actually... Th uh, yeah, yeah, okay. So, yeah, so we need to get to... Uh, we're basically halfway through, aren't we? If it's been three weeks since we set... since we set, From setting sail to crashing in the ice. It's been 18 weeks since then. So we've got 18 more weeks until rescue. 18 more weeks, correct? Yes. The winter will be long, but I feel it won't... But it, I feel it won't feel as such. Even thoughts can freeze out here. I think the weeks will pass before you know it. Still, you have been in command for quite some time now. It has made for 
interesting observation, at the least. And you're making your judgments, I take it. Templeton flicks through the pages of his notebook. Yeah, I still believe it was unwise to claim Cunt had abandoned the crew, no matter how truthful it seems to be. To disparage the man's character did no favours for you among his sailors. Yeah, maybe I should... Yeah, maybe he's right. I believe speaking with certainty wasn't the issue. We needed a definite statement on his condition. But attacking the man's reputation only emboldened his loyal crew. Templeton flicks through the notebook. I am disappointed by your refusal to take action against Stoke and his music. Leaving room op for such open disrespect to your authority, you now look weak and ineffectual. Better weak than a tyrant. I'm not here to abuse authority. Not abuse, in force. Templeton flicks through the pages. It is a shame we were not fully prepared for the leopard seal attack. The incident has weighed heavily on my mind ever since. It will be a long time before winter clears, but when it does, we will be closing in on our rescue point, which is also the last known location of the Viscount, if you may recall. I wonder if Hunt was still headed in that direction. Hunt? No, I doubt that. The man had little faith in the expedition. Hmm, I wonder. Do you still hope to find the Viscount? No, hmm. no matter. We've spoken enough. Best we get back to work. Okay. So in terms of the scouts, they're both able-bodied and ready to work. The scientists are suffering a bit. <laughs> Let's get the two engineers then to see if we can cure a couple of these freezings. We've got two Johns and Tucker, I think that is. I was hoping for the scientist, honestly. Because I would have liked to have... I mean... Hmm... We need uh, poor little Timmy needs to needs to get in there with his frostbite. If I cure them all now, does that mean Mr. Gloss will be able to make some more? I wonder. Well, let's cure them all now anyway. Thank you, Captain. They will be ready to work again starting today. Is there anything I can do for the crew? Uh, yes, okay, cool. So we have our scientists back. So what I can do is immediately set them uh, making some more. Um, that's okay for now. So everyone's healthy now. God, we need some, we need some good news. Let's uh, talk to Mr. Zack and Templeton. I should say, at least while we're waiting out the winter, we'll ha I'll have plenty of time to practice chess. If you're interested in a game, Templeton. I wish a good fortune, but I doubt you will develop much. It's too cold to think. Kasher and Kurt? Is that the same compass you carried in your third film? Indeed it is. I'm surprised you're able to pick up on those details. Well, I have seen them quite a few times. My family purchased a print of Through the White Wastes for private screenings, so I'm quite accustomed to it all. Through the White Wastes? Ha! Ah, you must have been this tall when that film came out. Maybe shorter. That canvas pack of yours. That must, be that must be 30 years old by now. Aye, I know how to keep my equipment well maintained. You're the same, ain't you? Of course. I'd never let my trusty camera even get scratched. You know, we barely had a budget for that first film. Most thought the idea was set for disaster. I had to get the sponsorship of Tin Beans to even get that, that expedition off the ground. I remember those adverts. Newspapers ran them for quite a while. In fact... I had some newspaper clippings for research, building a portfolio. I think one of those adverts is in this folder. Why would you need so much research? Seems a bit much for one expedition. Well, this is for something else. And that is... Well, it's somewhat shameful to admit, but I, I keep record of some historical figures that I hope have hopes on one day, well, writing a biography on. A biography? Yes, I, I know it's getting ahead of myself, but I like to be prepared for projects that are in the realm of possibility, maybe? Ah, I would like to see that. A historical figure, eh? I would say that you fit the criteria. 
flattering. But it does make me sound old. Ha! He doesn't like to feel old. Okay, let's send out expeditions first. Uh, I think I want to scout up towards the Viscount as a matter of priority. So we'll do both of those. Ooh, leopard seals. Or crab crab eater seals, yes. Um, well, we've got the dogs, so may as well. Although people will get frozen, but uh, that's that's fine. Let's get the seals in. I don't suppose we can scout with sailors. Can we? N no, surely not. No, we can't. It has to be scouts. Makes sense. Well, these other sailors, let's get them hauling in these uh, penguins now. Uh, we can have three, so we'll do the remaining three. Oh, they all, they're all freezing having done that. That means all the other ones have gone out are going to be freezing too. Oh, Ooh, the beds are free again. Uh, but I can't put them in because they've worked. Hmm. How are we going to manage that? Let's feed the hoosh pot. Ah, yeah, we've got a couple of these we can chuck on the furnace. That'll cure some freezing. I think we'll do that with those. Uh, 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 uh. And that will add 30 to the furnace. That'll be enough to heat, well... More people will still get frozen. Mm. I think these are worth more in the hoosh. I haven't quite decided without the crab eater seals. I think... Let's chuck... Chuck a few of those in. So that's up there. Now I think we're going to put some in the furnace. We'll definitely do the elephant seals. So that will cure two of those freezings. At 30. That's really good for the hoosh. I think we'll save it. Whereas the crab eater seals are worth as much to the hoosh as to the furnace, so we'll put those in. These fish too, I mean I'm saving them, but really that we're not really using up the dogs, are we? So let's put some of those into it. So we're up to sixty now. I mean it might be a it might just be a bad idea, but I'm gonna go with that. So we're looking all right for hoosh because I kind of want to raise the um, the morale as well. If I certainly don't want it to decline further, I, d I have no idea what will happen if that goes down to zero. I'm assuming it's game over. What's this? The hoosh pot. All right, well let's call people to dinner then. The crew return to their posts. The long dark continues. What's this? Repair a hole. Oh god, yeah, we want to do that. Uh, four people? I don't... It says there's one free. Don't know who though. Run. Anyone else fancy repair? No, okay, fine. Well, we'll <clears throat> we have to bear that in mind in the future, aren't we? All right, Stanbury. Arf, arf. Hmm. Arf. Miss Cordell, would you be able to calm that thing down? I am attempting to make a note of the day's work. The move has left Stanbury overstimulated and with nowhere to take them, bored. How long before the creature tires itself out? Pack can, a pack down can remain. A pack down can remain active. 
That's weird. A pack can remain active for several hours without taking a rest. And then it will calm down. Perhaps. Then another is likely to act out again. Ugh. How is anyone to have any work done in their presence? You will grow used to it. Learn to focus your mind. I'm focused on my duties at all times. Thank you very much. Then you should have no issue. Arf. Ah, Captain. We're set in for quite a few weeks. We'll have to find something good to pass the time. All sports are out of the question, considering the circumstances. Ah, perhaps we can share stories of expeditions past. I have quite a few up my sleeve. I don't have any stories of my own to share. Oh, don't worry, Robin. I have more than enough for the both of us. Though we may be here for quite some time. Better I get through them at a reasonable pace. I wouldn't want to waste every story I have in a single evening, would I? Oh well, I'll let you get back to your work for now. Not the dogs. They've been petted this week. Okay, they don't actually want to be talked to right now. Two Johns and Zack. How do you say this one? Acceleration. You said this was a simple book. You certainly picked an um, interesting time to start reading. I'd bet. It's too hard to see anything most of the time. What brought on the need to learn? Not going to be strong forever. Whaling work will dry up. Still all time to learn something else. Uh, oh, Nutley's up here. Thinking of going for a stroll? He's gone Scottish again. I find Scottish to Cornish really hard. Hmm? Oh, uh, what? Um. You were staring at the exit for a while there. Oh, ah, right. You all right? I, yes. <clears throat> Uh, it's going to be a long winter, isn't it? Should be. And the food we have now will have to last us, right? What are you getting at? I, well, nothing. Nutley scurries off, returning to his tent. Hmm. You see that, Shaw? Something's up with the doctor. Don't like it. Hmm. Let's go and check on the doctor. Ah, Doctor, you're back. You wandered off so soon after dinner. Is something on your mind? Oh, no, I was, um, just planning to get an early night. Oh, well, good night. Ah, uh, yes. Suspicious. Well, unless anyone's in my tent. We'll check outside as well, just in case there's anyone wandering around. Probably not. No. Okay, well, unfortunately I can't repair the hole in the canopy. We'll have to remember to leave four people spare for that, if we can. Um, end the week, I guess. So I, I don't want to... Oh, God, it'd be nice to raise morale, you know, but we can't afford the, the rations. Gonna have to, we're going to have to save on the fuel. Oh, I can't. I can't do it. But we're not gaining any any morale. God. Oh, that would. We could give people. We could give people some nice food. And it wouldn't matter if we re reduce that. I'm just thinking, we're doing alright for food at the moment. I just want to get the decorum up, you know? The whole sled team going to get freezing. Lefty's got cavities for frostbite. Oh my god. <laughs> How are we going to cure everyone of freezing? Oh. Oh my god. Okay. 
Okay, let's talk to people first. Just in case something happens. I've had to make a more concentrated effort to track the dazers of late. By my estimate, we're not even a third of the way through. Yes, I wonder if they will indeed be rescue waiting for us at the end. Harriet, now isn't the time for doom and gloom. Of, of course, of course, but I can't help thinking of the Viscount. The Viscount? Yes, I'm certain they expected rescue to arrive as well. Uh, that's a cheery thought, isn't it? Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six frozen, one frostbite. Great. We do have the medical supplies, though, to instantly heal people. That's something to bear in mind. Let's talk to the Stokes. You know he's anything about the dark lately? Since winter started, he seemed off. More than usual. No, I think we should have words. How's the mutts doing? Overstimulated, bored, cramped. They will grow used to it in time. What is the state of the boiler? Cramped, but it works. Nobody's dying. Good to hear. Thought I heard that one howling through the night. Stanbury? I doubt that. Stanbury is remarkably well behaved. Blue bar for these animals. Better behave than most of this crew. Again, blue bar. Asher and Templeton. Mr. Templeton, you wouldn't happen to have a spare pen, would you? It's so cold the ink in my own froze up. I am afraid I have the same issue. Blast it, I'll have to warm it up by the furnace then. Got the doggles. Gotta make sure they're okay. Have to get all the dogs out safely. <laughs> okay, so I think probably the best thing to do is going to be um, to get the two engineers to at least cure two people of freezing. Two Johns and Lefty. Okay. Um. Just wondering. Uh, what's my food situation? Five crab eater seals, five penguins. We've got the leopard seal, which I'm kind of saving. Let's do requests first. Uh, Mr. Zack. I've had it! I've had enough! Night after night, week after week, those... those... salters! Isaac, sudden decorum, please. Apologies, but I cannot take their presence any longer. Loud, disruptive, and the mess they leave behind after dinner. I just want some peace and privacy, is that too much to ask? Captain, I implore that you relocate me to another tent. Anywhere else, as long as it's away from them. I'd like to get decorum back. The question is, which one of these is likely to achieve that? I feel like that might lower it. Let's just see if this will higher it, heighten it. No, we lost Templeton loyalty. Oh, thank you, Captain. I wouldn't be able to handle an entire winter with that lot. Not lefty. Captain, need to do this, but... Do you mind moving me to a new spot? It's getting awfully cold and these old bones are starting to crack. I'm not owed special treatment, but I'd like to be moved closer to the boiler for warmth. Sure, he's an old fella. He needs to be closer to the warmth. Oh, Templin doesn't like me pandering to the sailors. Thank you, Captain. The winter has been harsh. Grips. Oh, God, here we go. Everyone wants to move. Um... Captain, do you mind if I move to a different tent? What is about the boiler? I'd like to be on hand in case of emergency. Would you be able to move me closer? I'm sorry, Grips, I just granted that spot to Lefty. What? He isn't even an engineer. Why should he be placed next to the boiler? Ugh, I knew I should have asked sooner. That's my fault. I won't complain. Demoralised, though. Sure, gentlemen. Need to do something about Arthur. Arthur? 
The doctor. Right, yes, Dr. Nutley. What do you mean, Grimley? Since winter started, he seems unwell. Or oh, you think the pressure is starting to get to him? I'm surprised to see you coming to us with this issue. I didn't take you to show concern to a high-class landborn. He's a good lad, means well. Besides, he's part of the crew. Hunt picked him out. Well, it's no secret the good doctor carries a nervous temperament. Do you think it's beginning to affect his own health? Or him not alone? Junior, Belford, and Darlin all think so too. Hmm, then it's quite noticeable. Don't worry, Grimley. I'll have words with him. Good. Better sooner than later talking to him. That's barely hanging in there. Captain, Tentleman, Templeton, I heard through the grapevine our good doctor was having a spot of bother. Indeed, you may just be able to help. You know the boy well, don't you? I should say so. How long have we been on the ice together now? Then you may be just the right man for this job. We're concerned by the doctor's temperament. He's slowing down in his work and may threaten stopping altogether. Well, his own health comes above his work, wouldn't you agree? Both are a matter of grave importance. You will speak to him, then? Hmm. I'm afraid that might be beyond me, Richard. What? It's the captain's duty to consult the crew. Right you are, Robin, but it's not just that. I've spoken to the lad quite a bit, but I've never made it through to the boy. Tough nut to crack. I might not have the right dis disposition for it. Too soft, I say. Excuse me? You treat him too softly. The young man's a doctor. He does not need to be handled with kid gloves. What he needs is someone to remind him of the duty behind his role, not sugared words. The boy's temperament is hanging by a thread, and you want sure to approach with a saw? You said it yourself. The gentle method proves ineffective. I said no such thing. Cut is right. Nutley requires encouragement more than anything. We know this. Sorry, Templeton. Thank you, Captain. There's no need to put more pressure on the lad. Encouragement, yes. But it em to em... <laughs> But it emphasizes what's required of him. I trust your judgment, Captain. Best leave the talk until after dinner. No need to interrupt his work further. Please let me know how you fare, Captain. Best of luck. Okay. Oh, there's more holes. Don't have enough men for this. Crips and Dick doing. About a quarter of the way into winter, but mark count. You have a different count by any chance? No. Damn. Was open you'd might. I was meant to ask, Mr. Templeton, what precisely is your area of expertise? Botany. Odd. How so? Botany is a study of plants, correct? Not an abundance of plants out on the ice, eh? The meteorologist, the biologist, I understand. But why were you chosen? I have a much wider range of knowledge outside of my field. I was chosen to be the head scientist of this expedition. By the benefactor, correct? Yes. Which reminds me, just who is this benefactor of yours? I asked Hunt often, but he always avoided the question. He avoided most of what I was asked of him. You ask many questions, Miss Belford. Exactly what Hunt said. You seem adamant not to answer. I do not see it as relevant information. Everything is relevant, Mr. Templeton. You can only hide secrets for so long. We will see about that. Let's check on the scouts, because I need them to go out. They're both in good shape. So, what I want to do is push out a bit further towards the Viscount. Let's keep going in this direction. Oh, well, I kind of maxed that out now. Maybe it's scripted when you when you get to it. What's the one over here? Oh, that's just the Orca Island. Okay, um, well, since we're here. Pingies. I don't think I'm going to send anyone to hunt this week. To try and manage the freezing situation. I mean, I'll grab my free penguin. I think I have to do that. Um, I don't know if I'll... I'm not sure yet if I'll assign any more to that. I want to get these holes going. Uh, 
medical tent, medical tent. Um, well, we definitely need to put in... Um, I'm tempted to do three and use the um, the medical comforts that we have. Ob he obviously needs to go in. Uh, who's the one who's demoralised? Oh, it's him, isn't it? We might be able to cure that in the hoosh pot, though. So let's get both of those in and one of the scientists, too. So we'll cure all those. Get them up on their feet again. Repair this hole. Okay, so that's, that's the that's the holes taken care of. Furnace. Crab eater seals are a decent source. This dude as well. We're going to put him in the hoosh pot to um, cure that demoralization. Last long, does it? We'll stick. Uh, I honestly don't think we're going to run out of the stuff for the dogs. God, I might chuck this into the furnace as well. We, demoralization isn't really an issue for us. Furnace that. Hush. Let's chuck this in. Chuck the penguin in. Don't think there's it. Okay, that didn't work. I need to come back out because the stack didn't go in properly. these in. There we go. So these, these are decent. We've cured the demoralization. Um, I think he's frozen, not frostbitten. So we've sort of managed that as well. Okay. Okay, well I think it's probably time to call people for dinner then, isn't it? I think we've done as much as we can. Um... Who is left who hasn't been used yet? There's two scientists. I wonder if they can bring in some of the penguins from the pile. I know they'll get freezing. I feel we've got to, we've just got to make use of everyone. They were the ones that got demoralized as well when they had to go and when they had to be killed. Um, so that's sort of rubbing salt in the wounds a little bit, isn't it? Oh well. Ooh, okay, let's call the crew for dinner. Crew have their meal. Um, let's see, what have we got? Little little vignettes here. We've got a uh, dog bothering Templeton for, uh, for some food. The engineers sitting together with the scientists. Front with another dog. Scouts are together. That's pretty. I like the art in this game. It's pretty cool. Crew returns to their posts. Well, we've got the holes this time. We'll seal that. We're gonna do. We'll do Arthur last. Um. Yeah, it's probably just Templeton down here. Captain, I've heard mutterings among the crew that have raised concern. It would appear that our rations of tobacco are finally running dry. Crew have already been on edge since the beginning of this winter. I doubt this will improve matters. Mr. Hammond and the sailors have been awfully fond of the leaf. I've even spotted them trading some of their food rations for it. Ridiculous, I know. The Appleton Company did well to supply us this long, at least. He likes that. Yes, it was remarkable it was even able to last as long as it has. Hunt must have consumed a quarter of the supply in his time on the ship alone. That lot are quite addicted to it. A simple plant carries so much control over them. Personally, I've never much cared for it. I tend to avoid any substance that could affect my body chemistry. Apart from caffeine. Still, I have an odd respect for the leaf. 
there is something admirable about a plant that can steer human behavior so strongly. No wonder our benefactor saw it wise to supply them in abundance. Tobacco, tin foods, our benefactor has their hand in many affairs, don't they? The Aptons are not content with being a simple tinned food company. No, they are building an empire. Just as they funded this expedition, so too have they funded countless ventures, countless discoveries. That is how their business operates. Do you believe they were simply fortunate enough to have peaches grow in their back garden? I've dealt with similar companies in my time, Templeton. Many cut corners focus on quantity over quality. It's a shame that the two are not inclusive, but that is an unfortunate reality of our world. If some flavour is sacrificed in the name of providing such a necessity to the, to the masses, then I would consider that an overall positive, no? You may have your doubts, Captain, I understand that. Do I approve of their eagerness to mine natural resources, to sell them off at the cost they do? No. However, I also understand that commodification is the vehicle to scientific study. I have all the money I need to research these plants. I've seen several breakthroughs and discoveries that would not be possible without their financial aid. If in return I must provide them with a commodity to mass produce and sell off, then so be it. I consider that a mutually beneficial arrangement for all involved. You seem truly passionate about this, he said noncommittally. I have spent a great deal of time questioning this arrangement, Captain. Do not think I simply took a paycheck blindly. I have weighed my options time and time again, and I know the good fortune our benefactor has afforded us. <clears throat> I apologize, Captain. It is not like me to ramble like this. I suppose the tension of this winter has begun to affect me as well. Perhaps a cigarette would help even myself. Or perhaps I simply need a good night's rest. Good evening, Captain. Right, let's talk to Arthur. Ah, Captain. Um... Is there an issue? We need to talk or the crew are worried about you. Let's just say we need to talk. Oh, right. Captain, I, I must apologise. There's no need to apologise, Doctor. Oh, but th there is. I know I'm not what you would have asked for in a ship's doctor. I'm nervous, my mind is often scattered, and, well, the sight of blood, it makes me faint. Hardly qualities befitting a surgeon, are they? You're a fine surgeon nonetheless. Let's, let's get his ego a bit of a bump. Captain, there's something I must confess. The reason Hunt took me on against all other candidates, well, it's because of my father. Your father? Yes. Well, you see... My father was Hunt's barber. They were quite friendly and, well, my father called in a favour. Oh, I don't want to upset him. You think it more likely that Hunt was repaying his barber than the simple fact that you earned the work? Yes. Ahem, <clears throat> sorry. My father was so proud when I took this expedition, believed it could finally toughen his boy up. <laughs> he was always obsessed with that, no matter what I did. For him, it always came back to how tough I was, or wasn't. But, well, you can see how that worked, didn't you? Can't you? I've had no issue with your work. Ah, Captain, there's no need to protect my self-worth. I know where I stand. Some of the crew have been quite kind to me. Too kind. Well, whether it's harsh words from Templeton or pats on the back from Kurt, their eyes are all the same when they look at me. A burden, a mouth to feed. So, prove them wrong. Hey, but I, I don't believe they are. I've tried, but, but I have to accept it. My cowardice leaves me a drain on the crew's resources. Selfishly so. Perhaps it better of me to... Uh... Do we sort of give him the proverbial slap around the face and tell him to get out of this? But I don't want to... I don't want to... 
dismiss it. You know, I think we need to confront it. So let's go in. Let's go in a bit hard. Nutley, stop this. You're talking nonsense. Oh, he's loyal to me. Oh, someone was loyal. Was it him? I... Right, of, of course, you're right. Ha! Huh. I suppose I've been acting foolish. Now isn't the time to lose my nerves. What remained of them? I... I'm sorry for worrying you, Captain. I... Nutley walks off, making his way back to his tent. Clearly, much is on the Doctor's mind. Good. Well, I think we brought that to a satisfactory resolution. Let's just check the Doctor out here. Uh, he's loyal to me. He is fully in my favour, as is Kasha. Very close to Lady Cordell now. Kurt's good. Uh, a little bit of a blow... Uh, yeah, a small decrease to Templeton. Um, Junior's pretty good. Getting there very slowly with Grimly. Uh, we're doing pretty well with Hammond. So that's... It's, yeah, it's all right. Uh, let's talk to Tashi and Runstar. Why are you so pressed up against that lamp? Tashi, uh... Was he the one I was trying to make scouse? Um, trying to lead? It's too dark for anything like that. Hmm? Missing your home, aren't you? Wherever that is. Not long now. Well, we can hope. Cavity, just London, I think. Two Johns, wait till you hear this. The winter's finally taken Tucker. Oh, what now? Tucker, that's nothing. Man's so lonely, he start talking to the woman on the tin cans. Shay's got an elusive look. It's a bloody drawing, Tucker. Oh, what's her story? Once upon a time, someone needed to put a face on their tinned peach can. The end. Don't take Tucker to one of them galleries, he'll lose his bloody mind. All right. Uh, all right, that's enough. We're not even halfway through the winter yet. <laughs> Lady Cordell? No, I think I've patted the dogs this week. Uh, they don't want to talk. No one's demoralised. I don't suppose we can get anyone else in a hospital bed. Nope. Uh, I'll take a quick look outside the tent in case there's anything there that needs to be done. I don't think there is. Here we go. Okay, well maybe... Oh, it's the decorum that's going to be the issue, isn't it? I mean, we just got to... we got to preserve stuff. Losing tent. I don't think I can lose 20. Oh dear. We could really use with another use another fuel source. That's why I was trying to get to the Viscount. I thought maybe there was stuff we could salvage, but I think we've kind of hit a roadblock on that. I don't really want three to develop freezing, though. Maybe I'll push the food down this time. I mean, they're kind of... I mean, the food and the fuel are kind of coming from the same resource now, so... Yeah. Okay, we'll do that. We'll, we'll lower the food this time. I really want to stop getting people, so many people freezing. Uh, one with frostbite. Kind of knew that would happen. Two frostbite. Three frostbite. Damn. Freezing. Freezing. He's having a bad time. Malnourished. Well, I mean... To be fair, he was going in the hospital bed anyway, wasn't he? So. Uh, while I'm out here, let's grab a free penguin. I should have been doing that all when they when uh, there was probably three weeks where there was just a part of them there, and I was just leaving them because I thought that's our winter food store. I mean, it is, but everyone who goes there gets freezing, so. It's not ideal. Let's have a look here. Winner can't be over soon enough. This is the longest I've gone without any proper exercise. Well, winter has granted me plenty of time to read by lamplight. Perhaps one should use this time to exercise their mind instead. 
Hells? What? That's that's the most obnoxious thing you've said so far. It's almost impressive. Uh, all right. Mr. Hammond, in my hands is a write-up I've been working on over the winter, intended for our benefactor. It would be good for you to have a look over the material. Let me know if there is anything missing. Nay, hey, sure thing. Oh, without dripping oil everywhere if you can, my research is quite important. And my work isn't. No, of course it is. Could you attempt to clean your hands at least? With what? Bloody ice water! I am certain I have a cloth somewhere. Here, take this as your own. Nay, hey, thanks. That hand cloth was actually embroidered by... Don't care! <laughs> Alright, let's do requests first. Let's talk to Rum. Captain, could you move me to a new tent? I'm stuck with my dar all winter. I thought it proper to place you with family. I'm not a child. You most certainly are. Well, I don't need him looking over my shoulder all the time, sir. You need your own space, then. Aye. Can you, Captain? Is there any downside to all these relocation requests? We'll relocate him as well. So we're getting Grimly loyalty for these. I mean, we're losing Templeton loyalty, but that was high to begin with. Captain? Templeton? Mr. Higgs. Ah, call me Tucker. Mr. Higgs is fine. Is there something you require? Must be nerve-wracking in here all day. Well, I say all day. Can't tell what time it is anymore, can you? Yeah, I suppose not, but... Must fry your head, Captain. Does it? What, Templeton? He could be quite the bother, yes. <laughs> uh, it's not too bad. Grown used to it. Nice. I suppose it's been long enough, no? I'm sorry, Mr. Higgs. Did you come here with a request or not? The days barely exist anymore. Nothing to do around here but pass the hours. So, you have nothing to request? Nah. You've simply come here to make idle chatter. Eh? Nothing better to do. Aye. Hmm. Captain? If you want to pass the time, then you'll be happy to clean up after the dogs. Hey, <laughs> splendid idea, Captain. Oh, I didn't say I wanted extra work. You wish to keep busy, and that is a task that needs doing. Ah, shit. Captain, it seems the winter is beginning to take its toll on the crew. We should take great care to ensure they keep their minds active. We still have a good deal of winter to work through. There is a tear there. We will get to that. Uh, two Johns and Run. You done with that book yet? Almost. Do you want to trade? All right, but you'll need to send it back to Mr. Zat when you're done. I know he's, he's been American sometimes, but... Okay, and you have to return this to Dr. Nutley. All right, less sharing books. That's pretty cool. Lefty and Gnomes. Oh, old, old man. Today's your birthday, isn't it? Surprise you still know what day it is. But hey, these old bones grow even older. Oh, you can't imagine what surprise you have planned. I actually asked Grimmy to carve a wooden whale for you before we set off. Oh, and where is it? Went down with the ship. Ah, well, it's the thought that counts. Okay, so first things first. Let's see if we can co cure some freezing with this. However, one of our engineers is not available. So we can only do one, and it has to be an engineer. Okay, well, there's one at least. Got the kill the scouts freezing. That's good. So she can go out and do a, a scouting mission. So that is good. Um, well, I think the beds are going to be kind of spoken for now. Because we've got the engineer with frostbite. Uh, why can't I highlight this person? Ugh. Freezing. Okay. Well, that's not so urgent. Frostbite. Frostbite and malnourished. Frostbite. So that's all the frostbite ones. Who else is freezing? It was a sailor, wasn't it? I'm going to need him to patch a hole, though. Okay, let's just do this bed rest for now. Um, 
to do the hole. Which requires four people. Doesn't have to be... So we'll put a scientist on this and three sailors. We'll put the freezing one on so he doesn't have to go out again. Okay. Um, let's go out here. Can I get another free penguin or did I get mine for the day? I got mine for the day. Uh, let's have a look at the scouting. I mean, we've gone out as far as we can now. Let's head. Let's head east. Crab eater seals, that could be quite good. Two loads of those. Okay, well that is pretty useful. They're both those scouts are going to get freezing now. I mean, because the, the guys who go out to get the penguins from the pile get freezing anyway, I may as well send them to go and get one of the seals. Let's do the one that's closest to home. Uh, we'll send all of these ones. Because they're they're pretty good eating the the crab eaters. Okay. Well, that's pretty much it for the hunting and expeditions. Um, let's have a look at the fuel situation. Such as it is. I think I'll put a, I think I'll put a penguin in there. Pot. God damn, I'll put the other two in here. Just the I'm worried about the decorum. I don't know where it's going to be coming from. Everyone's miserable. Um, Alright, let's call the crew for dinner then. Long dark continues. Uh, no one in there who wants to talk to me. Not these there, but is anyone in here? Just the puppies. I probably haven't stroked them today. Bark back. Pat it on its back. Pat its head. Anyone in my tent? Nobody in my tent. Guess we'll talk to Nutley then. As you step out of the tent, you notice Nutley approach. Uh, Captain, I've been thinking a great deal over the last while. I want to thank you for speaking to with me when you did. I I needed that. I've certainly made this expedition more difficult than it had a right to be through my previous cowardice. And for that I'm sorry, Captain Shaw. Nutley, not a single one of the crew has doubted you. We owe you a great debt. I wonder how my father is doing. On the other side of the world, I wonder if he's thinking of me. My mother and my sister too. Oh, there's so much I must return to. He pauses for a moment before presenting you with an envelope. Captain, if I fail to make it back to the world, would you be able to bring this letter to my father? Take the letter. You take the letter from Nutley's hands and give him a nod. The doctor gives you a nod back. Thank you, Robin. I hope I won't need to deliver this. Nutley gives you a nod as he makes his way back into his tent and you make your way back to camp. We're not going to read his letter. Personal. Runt. Is the winter over yet, Da? Oh, you're sick of it, eh? I was sick of it when it started. I want to move. Not much longer now, I'm sure. Hmm, I've noticed something. And what is that? Looking at some of the older photographs, a few of the dogs have grown quite a bit since we first landed. We've been here for quite some time, yes. It will be interesting to see the time lapse. Well, do not expect the rest of us to grow taller as well. Ha! Huh? But that reminds me, I've never interviewed you yet. And you just might be the most interesting member of the crew. I am not a member of the crew. There is no need to interview me. I disagree. Is that so? God, it's, it's noticeable when, two, when the two women whose voices are quite similar are talking. Um, there's too much I'm curious on. What led to the dog handling? Why the accent? Why are you Lady Cordell? You do recall the figure of speech regarding curiosity and the cat, yes? I thought you were more of a dog person. That was a joke. I am aware. I take it then that you're not interested in answering my questions? Not in the slightest. Understood. Okay, they are still done. I don't think there's anyone left to talk to. I think we'll end the week there then. 
Rations, rations, rations. I can't... Uh, things are not gaining any decorum just by giving people enough rations. But I'll lose it if I bump anything down. <sighs> I'm gonna... I'm going to keep it like this. I just... I'm I'm hopeful that if we can make it enough time that something that helps fuel the situation will come. That's it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I can't afford to lose the decorum. Oh, freezing. Probably all the one, all the four who went out in the hunt will probably become freezing. Mr. Gloss is cured. Of both. Cured. Cured. Gnomes has got freezing. Frostbite, I mean. Mrs. Gloss is freezing. Tucker is freezing. Ugh. I mean, it's not the worst situation. It's not the best. But our fuel situation is terrible now. Week 32. 12 weeks at third camp. Um... That's good, isn't it? Is that not the end of winter? Is that not as far as we needed to go, 12 weeks? I can't remember. Look, we're three quarters of the way to... If, if, is that rescue? That, that bit at the top? This is the sort of progression of the weeks. Um, so we're doing... Touch wood. Fairly well, I think. I mean, we're barely holding on in a couple of regards, but... Yeah. In any case, I've just checked the time in the video and we're coming up for the hour, so I think this is probably a good place to leave it for now. So thanks very much for, for watching this latest episode of The Pale Beyond. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I'm finding it a pretty harrowing <laughs> experience trying to keep everyone alive, but that's the fun of the game, isn't it? Um, we seem to be doing okay so far, as I've said. So um, If you did enjoy it, please uh, give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment. Let me know what you think. It's always good to get your feedback. And subscribe to the channel if you're watching this and haven't done so previously, because that would be amazing. So I uh, hope to see you next time for more, and it's uh, bye for now. <laughs>